Hey everybody, it's Pastor Jay, Rev Kenny, Pastor Kenny. And I'm grateful that you stopped by today to this edition of Uncut with Rev J. We use this moment to share and to discuss and to just put in our hearts and our minds those difficult theological questions that we struggle with on a daily basis. And if you've been watching the news lately, if you've been listening to all of the happenings going on around us, you saw last week where there was the final confirmation hearing for now Justice Kentaji Brown Jackson, that when the votes were cast, the total was 53 yeas, 47 nays. We understood going into that voting process, into that confirmation hearing process, we understood that there were going to be some people who were just not going to embrace the idea of a black woman, a black individual, much less a black woman, who was going to be nominated for a justice on the Supreme Court because it was going to disrupt the status quo. It was going to make a loud statement about the placement, about the value, about the significance, and about the contribution of black America to this European structured culture that we live in. Her presence posed a problem. We expected that to be a problem from some people. But when the dust settled and we saw the persons who voted no, for many of us, there was one name that was surprising, but yet it should not have been surprising. And that was Senator Tim Scott from South Carolina, the lone black Republican senator. One would have imagined that this black man, irregardless of party, Irregardless of, of ideology, irregardless of theology, this black man would have made it his business, a point to stand in solidarity with black people. Now, it wasn't a surprise to some of us that he voted no, because there is this fundamental truth that Jesus reminds us of in Matthew chapter number 12 in verse 30, where Jesus says these words, anyone who isn't with me opposes me. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Dr. King reminded us that there are gonna be some Negroes who are going to be opportunistic, who are going to be self-centered, who are going to be self-motivated to get what they can get over and against the expense of those who look like them. Jesus is letting us know today that just because somebody names my name, just because somebody confesses my name, don't go by what they say go by what they do. Because Jesus is making it known to us that you're either with me or you are against me. Now herein is the problem that we wrestle with in our culture today. Because there's so many who profess God's name. There's so many who say they belong to God, they love God, they're honoring God. But somewhere between the Old Testament 
and the fulfillment of the New Testament, they have extracted Jesus from the conversation. Because there's no way you can truly define God outside of the person of Jesus Christ. So Jesus is saying that if you're, if you're going to say you are with me verbally, then you're with me in the actions that you take. And if you're not with me in the actions that you take, then you are against me. There is no in between. There is no gray area. There is no both and. It's an either or. So what Jesus is letting them know and letting us know is that I understand that there are going to be some people who are not going to be with me. Color of skin aside, ethnicity aside, gender aside, there are some who are not going to be with me. We've been in the fight long enough to understand that there are some who are not going to be with us. But tragically, but tragically, we would like to believe that there comes a moment in time when standing for what is right is ultimately the true test of a person's character. Whether we like them or not, whether we agree with them or not, whether we side with them or not, the idea that out of 115, I believe it is, judges that have come before Justice Kentaji Brown Jackson, they've all been men, white men. And for a black man to see a black woman be presented for the highest court in the land and you hold true to your ideological beliefs over and against your cultural identification, it leads one to wonder whether or not you belong to the culture or not. Big picture here. Because we can get upset, we can be upset, we can be frustrated, we can be mad at what Tim Scott did. But Jesus reminds us, you're either with me or you're against me. And when you understand a person's actions will determine whether or not they are with you or for you. When you understand I'm determining how far we go based upon your actions, then I won't be disappointed in you, the individual, because I recognize that no matter how much you smile on my face, no matter how much you want to give me the right things or tell me the right words, your actions are going to speak volumes. We're in a culture in a day at a time now where the actions of so many who claim to be for Jesus, they're really not with Jesus. Because you cannot take Jesus away from the equation of trying to define God. He is God in flesh. He is the incarnate presence of God. That he says, when you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Not you've seen the law, not you've seen Ten Commandments, but you've seen the Father. So as upset as we may be, as challenging as we may be, we come to understand again, like Dr. King said, there are going to be some Negroes who are going to be opportunistic, who are going to be self-centered, who are going to be all about themselves, and they're not going to be there for the good of the cause. And when you understand that, you understand we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places, the power of darkness. That's what we wrestle against. So if they look like you, fine. If they don't look like you, fine. At the end of the day, the issue becomes, how does what you do line up with the God that you profess to follow? And that's where 
the rubber hits the road. I don't care how much you tell me. I love God. I don't care how much you want to tell me that you are pro-life. If you are pro-life, then you would be pro everybody's life who feels as if they are being oppressed. If you are pro-life, you would be pro-LGBTQ+. If you are pro-life, you would be pro-Asian American. If you are pro-life, you would be pro-Black Lives Matter. If you are pro-life, you are pro the poor. If you are pro-life, you are poor. You are pro the oppressed. If you are pro-life, then you are for every group of people who are marginalized because that's who God is. And we celebrate when one who's been marginalized has a chance to rise. We celebrate and we honor when one has been ostracized when they get an opportunity to be restored. That's the tough part of faith. Don't be upset when your favorite or those who you expect to be on your side are not on your side. Because if they were not on the side of Jesus, they will never be on your side. This has been Rev J. This has been Uncut. Until next time, peace.